Hey folks, Ray from DCRainmaker.com. Today I've got Sunto's latest watch, the Spartan Ultra here. Uh, I'm gonna show you how it works with the desktop software in terms of going ahead and using the web to configure the settings on your watch, as well as syncing your watch to uh, the web and your computer. Um, you can also do that via Bluetooth Smart on your phone in terms of syncing, uh, but for some of the settings, you're gonna have to use the web app in order to get those all configured. Um, so first thing to note though, before we go too far, is if you're visiting this video like in next, I don't know, spring or something, so spring 2017, a lot of things will have changed since then, uh, especially over the next couple months between August, September, October, um, and especially on the website side. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, but with that, let's go and get started. First thing we'll need is a charging cable. Uh, so this goes ahead and it connects on the back here. Now, if you've watched my unboxing video, you'll know this is really, really strong. It's magnetic, but it works really well. Um, so definitely go check out that unboxing video up there. Uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll plug it in. This is also the only way that you can get um, firmware updates right now is via the plug there. Um, so when you see that, it's gonna go ahead and, and trigger this uh, Sunto software that's being loaded or uh, opened up right now on my computer. Um, now this is the first time that I've connected this watch, so it's gonna go ahead and ask me to authorize my account. So I'm gonna do that right now. So once that's authorized, if we go back to the unit, um, it's actually showing an up firmware update. So this is uh, new here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click update the watch and let it do that. Uh, so I'll click this here. Now while it's doing that, just talk about this briefly. Um, you'll note that this is a new version of software. Uh, so in the past they used the Moves Link agent, uh, which kind of the basic exact same thing, just plug your, your watch in and then it synced it up to the web. Um, with the Moves Link, or with the Sunto Ultra series and the, the Sunto Spartan series, sorry, um, they are changing to this new software that you have to download. So you will need to grab that from Sunto's site. Um, if you just type in Sunto uh, Moves Link Download, you'll, you'll find it uh, pretty easily, uh, or you can do that from the, the menus within the Moves uh, count site. So let's go ahead and let this finish up. It'll take just a couple minutes here. So you can see as this goes through the update process here, uh, it's showing both the progress right on the screen itself there. So uh, that little kind of about quarter of the way there. Uh, and then down here, it's also got these four dots. So it's almost at the quarter of the way dot on the first one. Uh, and then it'll keep on going from there. Uh, I probably can see this a little bit better like that. Um, and then of course it's showing the progress bar along the bottom there as well. Uh, so right now we're about uh, 60, 90 seconds into it. This is about a four to five minute process in total. Okay, so it finished up syncing those settings. Uh, and then now lastly, it typically will go ahead and sync GPS data as well. And it doesn't have to do it on this particular sync because I just did it. Um, but if you haven't done that, the GPS data allows you to get faster reception when you're outside. So with this, this is basically all there is to this. You can go here and you can look at any of the watches that you may have uh, linked up to this. In this case, I just have that one. I could force a software update if I wanted to, but there's nothing there. Uh, diagnostics uh, to send logs to Sunto. Presumably if something goes wrong. Uh, about will go ahead and uh, give me my Sunto Link version here. Uh, so this is called Sunto Link, where the other one's called Moves Link. So with that all set, let's go ahead and dive into the settings here. So I've got the uh, watch page there. This is kind of your default moves count uh, page. So if I go up to me first, so if you go to Sunto or movescount.com and load that up, um, you'll get to this page here. So this will show you all of your recent activities. Uh, so you can see these here, there's some different charts and stuff. Um, so they're cycling, running, etc. But up top is where we want to go, which brings us to the watch page. So we'll click here, we'll click watches, and this brings us to the gear that I have in my account. So obviously I have a lot of gear in my account, so you're seeing a lot of watches. Um, but you can see the last sync time, so in this case last synced one minute ago. Uh, the other ones just simply say new settings are not synced. Uh, so if something's changed, and it seems to show that even when things haven't changed, uh, maybe just like a back-end thing. But I've got this one here, we're gonna open up the Sunto Spartan Ultra and kind of walk through some of those changes or some of those differences between this page and what it looks like for the uh, Ambit series. Okay, so at the top of the page we have me, um, and then down below here we have the Sunto Spartan Ultra. Um, the checkbox let us know that this is all synced to this. Uh, so once we make some changes, that won't be the case anymore. Next, we got the different sport modes. Uh, so you can add numerous different sport modes. In this case, I can go to add activity here. And when I do that, you'll see all these different sport modes that are offered. Um, lots of them, bowling, or sorry, uh, yeah, bowling, boxing, canoeing, cheerleading, uh, on and on and on and on. Now, the thing is, it's not actually you know, giving you details about those sport modes. It's just kind of based for calorie assumptions and for any sort of data fields that you want to set up differently. If I were to go ahead and add table tennis, for example, here, um, it'll show up this list right here. 
uh, and you can see uh, it doesn't really do much when I click there. These are the data fields that are being shown. So I have two displays, average heart rate, heart rate, time, duration, duration, lap time. Um, and I can enable that my watch by clicking this button right there. And that'll go ahead and enable that. The thing that you're missing right now is the ability to edit any of these data fields. And this is something coming in September of 2016. Uh, so all these different modes that I've got here, I can't actually edit anything. And so I can't change in the data fields. Whereas if I go look at the Sunto Ambit, um, these are the sport modes there. So you can see Alpine skiing, cycling. I have this edit option. And this allows me to go ahead then and uh, choose all the different fields on the display. It allows me to choose the recording interval, the GPS accuracy rate, uh, different pods to search, and there's even a more advanced setting there for heart rate limits and auto lap and auto pause and all these sort of things that uh, right now I can't set on the Spartan Ultra Series watches on a per sport basis anyways. Um, so these are some of the things that, you know, right now they, they're not there, but again, it's supposed to be coming here in the September timeframe. So I can go down, you can see all these different uh, sports. I believe it's 18 sports that the Ultra allows you to have configured. Uh, sorry, so 20 sports uh, can be synced versus I believe on the peak, uh, it's like six or eight sports uh, in total. And I think it gives you a total of 10 uh, right now plus two uh, multi-sports. So you're basically double the number of sports that you can have stored in the watch itself. Um, now keep in mind that's different than the recorded activities. That's a whole different ball game. That's, you can go out and do numerous activities before you have to sync again. So again, we're back on the Sports and Ultra page here, into navigation, into routes, um, and you can see these are the routes that I want to sync to my watch. So each one of these are using watch right there. Uh, so this one called Market 2, if I were to check this, then it's gonna actually sync it to the watch, otherwise it won't. Um, but I can go ahead and I can create a new route in here to follow on the watch itself. Um, if I choose Edit, so I'm gonna choose uh, this one right here. It's then going to bring up the map to go ahead and allow me to edit that particular route. Uh, it's not editing settings for how the watch is going to use that route, but just actually the route itself. Uh, so you can see this pulling up. There we go. Um, and it's still grabbing the, the display data. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side, it actually will show up now as used with my Suunto Spartan Ultra right there um, and all the different watches that I have listed. Uh, so it's kind of neat that it actually shows you that on this display page itself. Uh, and again, the activity type is up here. Uh, and then you can see, you know, points of interest, the heat map I could overlay on top of this if I wanted to. Um, the the Wi-Fi down here in the cave is a little bit crappy, so it's kind of slow. This probably is not Suunto's fault, more as it is my own uh, Wi-Fi connectivity down here. So you can see there's the heat map. Heat map's really cool because it allows you to see where other people are actually running. Uh, it's really useful if you were to zoom out and want to kind of figure out the most popular trails in a given area. Um, probably one of the coolest features on uh, moves count today. So back to the settings page though. Okay, so after routes, we have general settings for the watch. So you can see backlight mode, automatic or toggle. We can set this again on the watch itself. Backlight brightness, we can also set that on the watch itself. Uh, bump that up a little bit since I just updated the firmware. Let me look at saving that setting. Uh, the button tones, vibrations, whether they're on or off. Um, for me, I like uh, basically all off for tones and vibrations all on. Um, the compass declination and then save a setting right there. And then I'll go to unit settings. Uh, here we have imperial or metric, uh, your date and time configuration. And then finally, personal settings down here uh, around basically your body profile. Um, so gender, birth year, height, etc. cetera. Um, these you can also change across the board via, or you will change across the board via the moves count settings there. Um, so that's essentially what you've got in terms of settings on the Spartan Ultra today. Um, so definitely not as much customization. You won't see, for example, apps in there. Uh, whereas if I were to go over here, I'd be able to add apps into the uh, Ambit series. Then there is no apps at this point in time for the Ultra um, or for the Spartan series. That's something that they're looking at doing down the road, but it's not there. Um, now you'll see that we made those changes here on the Spartan. Thus, we've got this, it's out of sync message here. So I just got to go back here to this uh, and then resync things. Uh, and honestly, the easiest way to do that is simply to unplug it and plug it back in and I'll go ahead and it'll, it'll sync that automatically. Or you could do that via your phone as well and sync those settings before you head on out. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. Uh, definitely check out the other videos linked down below or above or in the playlist there uh, because those are all the videos I've made on this watch thus far. There's more videos coming up. I've got my next video I'm gonna do about navigation and routing and kind of explain how that works outside. Uh, and then if you've got other ideas for videos not already covered, drop them down in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll get to them. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. That way you stay tuned for new videos the second they're released. Thanks for watching.